this video, we're going to be talking about Tanko theorem. We'll be talking about how to prove Tanko theorem and also how to spot it. We'll try out some examples to make Tanko theorem look a little bit easier. And at the end of it, you should have a better understanding of how it works. I hope you guys like it. In previous videos, we've talked about what a tangent is and how it works in a circle. We said a tangent as a line that passes through a circle but only touches it at one point. This is how you prove tan theorem. We are trying to prove the statement the angle between a tangent to a circle and a chord drawn at the point of contact is equal to the angle which the chord subsends in the alternate segment. Okay, so let's get into proving. So to prove tan chord, the first thing we do is to construct. So we construct a line from B down to the circumference, but it must pass through the center of the circle, meaning that we are trying to draw a diameter from B. The next thing we do is that the point of contact, let's call it D, we also construct another line to C. So we are trying to prove that A is equals to C, B, E. Now let's call this one, let's call this two. So basically, we are trying to prove that A is equals to B1. So let's get into proving. The first statement I do see is that B1 and B2 add up to 90 degrees. The line DB is passing through the center of the circle, meaning that there is a radius connected to a tangent. And whenever a radius connects to a tangent, the resulting angle is 90 degrees. We also see that DCB is equal to 90 degrees. DCB forms 90 degrees because DB is a diameter. We therefore, that is angles in a semicircle. Now, if you focus on triangle DCB, we understand that that BDC plus B2 is equal to 90 degrees. Now, how we do know that is because the angles we get from here, the angles we get from here, and the angles we get from there add up to 180, since that's sum of angles in a triangle. So since this is 90, the remaining angles you're going to get here would also be 90. That's why we know that B, D, C, and B2 is equal to 90. Now, in the previous statement we had over here, we said B1 plus B2 is 90, and we also have here that BDC plus B2 is also 90. If you notice this two statements, both of them has 90 degrees, both statements has B2, so it would also mean that this last value here should also be equal, meaning that B1 should be equal to the angle BDC. Now we also know that BDC is equals to A. The angle BDC here is equals to the angle A here due to angles in the same segment. Angles in the same segment normally forms like a butterfly or some people call it a bow tie. So we understand those two angles will be equal. And again, we see that B1 is equals to BDC and BDC is also equals to A. So if that's the case, since we have BDC and BDC there, B1 would actually be equals to A. As you know, A is equal to C, B, E. And that's exactly how you prove tan cut. It's very important for you to know how to prove tan cut and also know how to spot tan cut. Proving of tan cut is what we just did right now. The spotting of tan cut, first and foremost, you should have a triangle, a triangle which touches each vertex of your circumference. As you can see, you have A, you have C, and you have B. Now, secondly, in your triangle, there will be a line 
which is your chord, connected to a tangent, in this case, which is BE. That angle that is formed is called your tan chord. Now, the angle that it is equivalent to is usually the third angle that is not on your chord. So we understand that on our chord, we have this angle over here and we have that angle over there. So it's neither of those two angles is the last possible angle that you have over there. And that is how you always spot tan chord. I hope this helps. I hope the proof made you understand tan chord theorem a little bit better. Now, this is an example that explains how to use tan chord theorem. Okay, so we have this example where they ask us to find A and they ask us to find B. Now, the first thing that we see from here, if we're going to use tan chord, is we have our triangle and we have a tangent here. So this is our tangent, this is the chord. Now, if this is our tan chord, we understand that if this is A, it means that A should be equals to 4B. That's the first piece of information that we have, and that is tan chord. We also understand that if we look at the other side, and this now becomes our chord, and this is our tangent, we understand that this should be equal to that over there. B plus 20 should be equals to 4B minus 70 also tan chord. Now, for the first statement we have here, we can't really do much. We have two unknowns there, so it's not going to be possible for us to get the answer. However, the second statement, we can simplify it and get an answer. So as you can see, we have the first answer as b is equal to 30. To get A, we can substitute B equals to 30 into this one that we have here. And that's it. Your answer is A equals to 120 and B is equals to 30. And that's it. We have done eight theorems of circle geometry. This is the last of the bunch that you need to learn from grade 11 mathematics. It's very important that you know how to prove some of them and also how to use all of them. Do check the description for the other Euclidean geometry videos. And on your way out, please do not forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.